Is egg health a concern of yours and you're wondering if there's anything you can do? And if so, what can you do? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. If you guys like natural fertility tips and these type of educational videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button below and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. So if you're someone who wants to know how they can help to support their egg health and improve it, you're watching the right video. My name is Heather Rodriguez and my team and I for the past 12 years have helped couples who are trying to conceive use natural therapies and egg health happens to be a category that we have seen miraculous results in. So go ahead and stay tuned. I'm going to be covering the five top areas to focus on when you are trying to improve your egg health. Okay, so before we jump into the five top things that you can do, we need to kind of step back and understand, can you have an impact on the health of your eggs? And the answer is, you may be. I would love to say for sure yes, but for a lot of people, we have actually seen differences after they followed these different protocols. So here's how it works. You have a storage of eggs that you are born with, and there's a period of time when that egg, a bunch of eggs, are actually taken and prepared for ovulation. They're matured, they're put through a whole process, and then one ends up being chosen uh, that's matured to ovulate. So during that window of time, it's a 90-day period of time when that egg and future egg and follicle is actually exposed to your body and the different things that you're exposing it to between lifestyle, nutrients in your blood, and so on, and we'll cover those things. So there's a 90-day cycle of the egg, and that is when it's impacted by positive choices and negative choices. So what you're doing today, the choices you're making this week, are impacting the egg that you're going to ovulate three months from now. This goes... Uh, this is also the same for sperm health. So anything that I'm talking about today, you could just change the word egg health to sperm health and it's going to apply to men as well. So there you go. During that period of time, you can have that impact. Something to also think about though is that when you're trying to conceive, you might be trying for a couple of months. That's normal. So you can't just do something for one month and then count 30, uh, 60, 90 days from then and expect that egg to be great, but then not care about the eggs and cycles after that. So this is something that's going to be lifestyle changes, something you have to be consistent with in order for it to work. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first important step is to make sure that you have healthy circulation and blood flow to the reproductive system. This has been shown to make a big difference in the maturation, the health of the egg, as well as implantation and health of the embryo going forward. So some ways that you can increase the circulation to your reproductive system is going to be through exercise, choosing something that you enjoy, such as yoga, running, walking, using a rebounder, trampoline, swimming, whatever it is, dancing, whatever it is, doing something on a daily basis to help to increase your circulation, this will make a big difference. The second is to use something such as self-fertility massage. Self-fertility massage is a technique that I developed over 12 years ago that thousands of women have used that is an external therapy you do for yourself that will help to increase circulation to the reproductive system as you're actually massaging and working yourself. There's two other things that you can look into. The first is gonna be beets. Beets actually contain nitrate, and nitrate turns into nitric oxide within the body, which helps to increase circulation. This has been a big thing that's happening within the workout world and the, uh, for athletes where they're consuming beet juice powder, they're juicing beets, they're eating beets. You can just drink some beet juice on a daily basis with some other vegetables, which is something we would recommend in the natural fertility diet anyways, and this can help to increase circulation to your reproductive system. Another thing is a supplement called L-arginine. This has been shown to increase circulation as well because it creates nitric oxide within the body. And make sure you're drinking plenty of water because that's gonna help your blood to stay, to flow nicely and to stay well hydrated and water is just very, very important for that. So that's the first tip is to uh, make sure you have healthy circulation and that you are increasing the oxygen in your blood from exercise and having healthy blood flow. Something to keep in mind is step two. You wanna make sure that you have a healthy hormonal system. And there's a couple different ways to do this. If you're experiencing a specific fertility issue, then there's gonna be a protocol of lifestyle changes, herbs, and supplements that you can use for that specific fertility issue. But to generally support the hormonal system, there's a couple things you can do. This is gonna be helpful for egg health because you want to make sure that your monthly cycle is working properly. You wanna make sure that the, the hormones are being released at the right time to help with the follicles to mature and helping to stimulate ovulation and then helping the, uh, the egg to move down the fallopian tube and helping with implantation. There's so many things that happen in your monthly hormonal cycle that it's good to be doing something to help and support that cycle on a monthly basis. So there's a couple things to keep in mind for general hormonal health. The first is to cleanse. Fertility cleansing at least twice a year is what we recommend and this generally just helps the overall reproductive system. 
Our fertility cleanse focuses on liver health. The liver is one of the main organs of detoxification within the body, especially as it pertains to hormones. And the cleanse also focuses on uterine health, increasing the um, circulation to the reproductive system as well as helping to cleanse the uterus. So fertility cleansing is one great thing to do to help to support hormonal balance. The other is to eat a healthy fertility diet that's very nutrient dense. I have a video on both of these topics. If you wanna learn more in depth, you can see the video on um, the natural fertility diet below, you'll see it pop up here. Um, I'll also put a video up about fertility cleansing and make sure that it's down in the description. The third is finding herbs for support. I love herbs for fertility. There's so many things that they do. A general herb that is very useful for overall fertility happens to be maca. It's a general superfood. It doesn't contain any hormones, but if you do have specific fertility issues going on, reach out to us. There are herbs that are specific for various fertility issues, and we can send you some articles and some research on those various topics. Um, and then the rest, the next tip is to reduce your exposure to xenohormones. This is another way to support hormonal health. So a lot of the hormonal issues that we're experiencing today you probably notice a lot of people are experiencing them through either because of menopause, PMS, acne, PCOS, so many different things. One of the main reasons is we are being exposed to compounds that actually mimic hormones. So we're, we're being exposed to xenohormones. This is through our food chain, through the body care products that we're using, our environment, plastics, and so on. So learning how to reduce your exposure to these compounds is gonna make a big difference. A couple ways of doing that is making sure to eat organic, reducing your use of plastic, using um, fertility-friendly body care that doesn't have a lot of these compounds that also mimic hormones. I'm gonna do another video on the eight things to avoid for egg health. So I go into more detail on what those things are specifically in that video. So make sure to watch that. Um, so reducing your exposure and eating organic is actually one of the best things you can do for that. Learn about the dirty dozen, make choices on what's most important. I know for some people it can be very expensive to buy organic. So just really learn what's important to purchase organic, especially the meats and the cheese and the dairy, because that's going to be more compounded in the glyphosates and different compounds. But I go more into that into in another video. Um, okay. So our third step to take is to make sure that your nutritional intake is rich that you're eating a healthy fertility diet that is low in processed food and high in whole foods. There's a couple reasons that this affects egg health specifically. The first is gonna be that a, that diet is very high in antioxidants. Antioxidants are gonna help to protect your eggs, the ovum cells, from being damaged from free radicals. Free radicals can actually damage the cells and they can also um, affect the DNA strands. So we want to keep that intact. And this is in both men and women. So having a diet high in antioxidants. To know, the way to know if you're getting high in antioxidants is you wanna make sure you're eating a lot of different colors. The next is to eat a, a diet that's rich in anti-inflammatory foods. Again, most whole foods are anti-inflammatory, healthy fats, healthy fiber, all of these things is, are found in the fertility diet. Um, a diet that's rich in minerals and vitamins, this is going to help to protect, to cleanse, um, for cell renewal, all of these different things. These are gonna be important for egg health in general. And then fiber, fiber is one of the main ways that your body helps with hormonal regulation and getting rid of excess hormones from the body. So eating a diet healthy in fiber is gonna be great for not only digestion and absorbing nutrients, but getting rid of those excess hormones. And then last is, is the fertility diet is a diet that is high in healthy fats. These actually are, are needed for producing hormones, but also for uh, protecting cell integrity um, and cell health. So some top foods for egg health. All whole foods are gonna be great, but these are some that are very specific. Uh, royal jelly, maca, fertility greens, which is a concentrated greens powder, broccoli, any type of berry, dark leafy vegetables, halibut, salmon, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, turmeric, and ginger. So of course you need to eat other foods besides that. So eating a whole natural fertility diet, which I will link below details on what that is and how to get started with that. Um, these are some foods that are very specific for egg health. Now I'm gonna briefly cover some lifestyle and dietary habits that can negatively damage egg health. Again, I'm doing a whole video on this, so make sure to watch out for that one. But cigarettes, caffeine, alcohol, sugar, non-organic meats and dairy, soda, low-fat diet, processed foods, trans fats, and GMO foods. Those all have a negative impact directly on egg health. So the egg that you that is now preparing for ovulation 90 days from now is being impacted by these being, being exposed to these elements currently. Okay, 
Step number four is using supplementation. Supplements are absolutely amazing. You're able to get uh, compounds in concentrated amounts so you can get any a, a therapeutic effect from them. It's amazing the access we have to, to herbs and supplements and the effects they can have on our body. Absolutely amazing, so use this to your advantage. Um, there's a couple of supplements to consider and learn more about. Everyone who's trying to conceive should be on a multivitamin. There's gonna be folate or folic acid in them. There's gonna be iron, vitamin C, all these things that are important for ovulation and for general health. Uh, the next is an antioxidant. Eating a diet rich in antioxidants is very important, but you wanna get as many antioxidants as possible. So supplementing with an antioxidant blend that is specific for fertility is going to be really good. There's tons of different antioxidants out there and they each actually do a different thing. Vitamin C, is different from pycnogenol and what it does in the body. So finding a antioxidant that is blend that is specific for fertility, I happen to sell one, um, is going to be very beneficial. Science has shown that antioxidants help to increase egg health. So this is something that's very important. I will link to a video that goes into more detail about antioxidants and fertility and how that works. The next is a supplement called ubiquinol. This is actually a concentrated form of CoQ10. CoQ10 uh, has become very popular and ubiquinol is my preferred form of using it. So our ubiquinol is easier to digest. Um, it's also more absorbable. So what happens, there's been two studies on ubiquinol that I'm gonna read here. It helps to, it's part of what's in the cell that increases cells energy. It's the energy center of a cell. So as you get older, you have less CoQ10. So if you're running low on CoQ10, your cells aren't gonna be functioning as quickly, turning over, cleansing, all these things that they have to do as well as they used to when you were younger. So supplementing with ubiquinol has shown to do many things. So um, after 15, the first study, after 15 weeks of supplementing with ubiquinol, this is a rat study, um, there was an increase in both cell energy, egg health, egg quality, fertility and fertilization in the rats that were used in the study. That was only after 15 weeks. Uh, the second study was they used 600 milligrams daily for this, okay? So that's very high amounts, mind you. Um, 600 milligrams daily were used by older women undergoing medical fertility treatments. There was a improvement in egg quality and fertilization noted in that study. So this is something that we've noticed that many um, clinics are actually sending their clients to our website to purchase this supplement and to use it in preparation for their IVF. So this also has similar results for increasing sperm motility as well. We have more information on that at the website if you wanna learn more about that. Uh, so the next supplement is L-Arginine. I spoke a little bit about this a minute ago. It's a supplement that helps to increase circulation to the reproductive system. Um, this has been shown to increase egg health as well. Maca is another great supplement to learn more about. I can link a video down below. You can click on it here. Um, but maca is great overall endocrine system and hormonal support. It's just a wonderful tonic food. Uh, as is royal jelly. I love using royal jelly for egg health. It's very nutrient dense. It's a compound that is fed to a, a working bee baby that is then turned into a queen because it is fed this food called royal jelly. It's just a very nutrient dense food that you can add to honey and take it by the spoonful, put it in your smoothies and so on. Um, and then the last is a nutritional green superfood such as fertility greens. This helps to make sure you're getting a lot of green vegetables into your diet. Those are some of the supplements that can help to increase your, um, your activity of antioxidants, of nutrients, of minerals, all of these different things of fiber um, on top of a healthy fertility diet. All right, so we're on to the last step. The last step is to manage your stress. We're not gonna eliminate stress, that's not realistic. Reducing our exposure to stress, yes, let's get that on the list. But having some tools in our bag to manage stress is gonna make a big difference. When you're under stress, your prolactin levels and your cortisol levels increase, and that can cause hormonal issues. That can cause a lot of different issues with your monthly cycle, um, ovulation specifically, and the length of day of your cycle. All these different things, um, all these different parts of your cycle can be impacted by stress. So there's two different tools I want you to figure out for yourself. The first is something you're doing on a daily basis to de-stress. Not because something stressful happened, but something that is self-care-like. For instance, going for a walk, taking a bath, 
cup of tea, listening to some music that really makes you happy, spending time in nature. That would be something you're doing on a daily basis to help manage stress and to de-stress. The other thing is to have some type of tool in your bag for when stress is happening. So if you're having a stressful interaction at work, if there's something that's happening that just hits you and you're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is really hard to handle, having a tool such as meditation, prayer, um, EFT, whatever it is, essential oils, whatever it's gonna be, so you have a tool on hand to help to manage the stress in the moment. This is something you actually can get really good at and that you can help. You're never gonna avoid stress. You're not gonna block stress out of your whole life, but how you react to it actually can change over time through practice and using these tools. All right, so supporting egg health is absolutely important for pretty much any woman who is trying to conceive, but especially women who are, um, as we get older or who have been having fertility issues or want to just have and prepare for the best pregnancy possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over um, a summary of the, what the steps are, but there's two things I want you to remember. The first is that it is a 90 day cycle. So these are things that you're gonna need to do consistently. Um, and then the second is, is that if you want, I have a whole guide that has all these notes that has links to articles with studies on everything that I mentioned. So you can read in depth each step. Go ahead and go to the link below or go to egghealthtips.com and you can download this guide. That's gonna cover everything that we went over in the video today. So you can print that out, you can use it and it includes this, includes a 90 day program um, that is specific to what you need to do diet-wise, herb-wise, supplement-wise, and natural therapies-wise, okay? So here's a quick recap. The first is to increase circulation to the reproductive system using um, something such as massage, exercise, water, etc. Encouraging and being aware of hormonal balance and hormonal health, eating a nutrient-rich diet and using supplements to help to support that, such as antioxidants, multivitamins, uh, ubiquinol, uh, arginine, fertility superfoods, and try and create some type of stress support system for yourself for acute stress as well as stress just from de-stressing from the whole day for the long term. So I would love to know which tip you found most helpful and are going to implement first, which one's gonna get you to jump right in, please put that in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions about this video, we are so passionate about helping you with your fertility. We've been doing this for 12 years. This, my team and I, this is our mission and my team is absolutely amazing. So a lot of you have worked with them and have been hearing from them going back and forth um, with questions. So put that in the comments below. Um, and again, if you want my complete guide to egg health and you wanna download that, click on the link down, down there and you can get that. Um, but I hope you found this really helpful. It is really, really important and we have seen such great results with it. Um, we've seen people who have gone through IVF, two, three failed IVFs, started this program, maybe added some other things to customize their program, and they ended up having an incredible retrieval, incredible fertilization rate, and so on. So I hope you found this helpful, and I will talk with you in the next video.